1884, Paul Gottlieb Nipkow patented the Nipkow disk. It took another 40 years of technology advancements. Until 1925, John Logie Baird was able to build the televisor, a mechanical television which kicked off the beginning of video broadcast. Nowadays, everyone is able to build a televisor at home from hobby parts. In this video, I will share with you my take on that, sharing all the plans and details for a cool weekend project. This video is sponsored by Bumble Lab. No matter if vector graphics, analog TV signals, VGA or LEDs, through the 11 years of my channel, there was always some sort of visual theme. And since my fascination with the good old CRT technology is even increasing, I thought I should do some experiments. Initially, I started trying to reproduce a way a CRT TV is projecting an image on the screen with a UV laser and a light reactive 3D printer filament. That already was showing results, but it was so mesmerizing that hypnotized by the light, I cranked it up to 11 with some destructive results. Oh no! <laughs> ah, ah! Uh... Yeah. Although there was some progress, I needed to order better parts and after a suggestion from the sheep on my live channel, I traveled a little more back in time, making a mechanical television. That's actually not that bad. It needs a really fast LED. But it wouldn't be bad actually. The concept is quite simple. We have a disc with holes with increasing distance from the center. When we place a light behind and rotate the disc, we can see now that the holes are drawing lines. If we limit our view to a smaller section, it almost looks like scan lines from a TV screen. Now all the lines are solid, but we also have the possibility to toggle the light. Doing it with the right timing, we can actually make individual pixels light up. The PWM dimming switches on and off really fast. To make it work, we need to use some electronics. To rotate the disc at a precise speed, I'm using a common stepper motor. We also need a driver for the motor and a driver to switch the light. An ESP32 microcontroller with its Wi-Fi capabilities can receive the video signal and control the drivers to display the image. An opto-interrupter is needed to detect the start of an image and maybe control the rotation speed. As a light source, I'm using a high power LED. We also need two power supplies for the different motor and LED voltages. I linked all the parts, project files and my tools in the description if you want to rebuild it. I designed the disc and the mount in Blender again and printed them. The disc has a diameter of 25 cm, so it still fits in the volume of the X1 Carbon from Bamboo Lab, which is today's sponsor. I'm really happy they asked me to promote their printers since I'm convinced they are game changing. The X1 Carbon is on the next level at a fair pricing. I consider myself a lazy person and the most annoying thing about 3D printing so far was for me the first layer calibration. I want 3D printing to be effortless and about the design and creation and not about constantly maintaining the printer. With the Bumble Lab X1 Carbon AMS combo, it is the first time I feel this way. The X1 uses several features like a LiDAR to perform a calibration in the beginning of the print. It's optional, but it guarantees a perfect first layer and optimal print bed adhesion. The carbon design of the gantry allows for outstanding printing speeds. For this project I needed a few iterations for the disc and the frame. For the projection screen I used a glowing material which is printed between 1 and 3 layers thickness. I really don't want to manually swap the materials and clean the nozzle each time I print a different part here. And this is where the multi-spool AMS extension comes into play. It holds up to 4 different materials which can swap automatically according to your settings in the studio. The only thing I have to do is to get my parts off the build plate. I linked the X1 Carbon combo in the description if you're interested. And don't miss Bumble Lab's best deals on October 21st till December 3rd. Find out more via Bumble Lab's early Black Friday page to get the biggest deal of the year. Now that the parts are printed, we can attach the screen, 
the opto interrupter and the motor to the holder with some M3 bolts. Then the disc is attached with a press fit. I kept the disc light for fast rotation. It has the scan line holes for 32 scan lines and an extra notch for the opto interrupter to detect the start of the frame. You want quite some power so I took a 3 watt LED, soldered on the wires and attached it to a heatsink. A drop of hot glue might help here and there. Important for the LED is that it's fast switching. LEDs with a phosphor layer are probably not fast enough. On this here you can see there is no diffusing yellow material on top. Just a bare dye. So this will be fine. I picked a wavelength of 400 nanometers. That's already ultraviolet and not very pleasant to the eyes. So wear protection if you use them too. From my test before with this photoreactive PLA I noticed the high energy light excites the material really strongly yes. while red light does almost nothing. But how is that relevant to us? I'm using the glowing material as a projection screen so the pixels will persist longer and give us a less flickery image just like the phosphor layer on CRT TVs. Let's test it. Oh, that should work. Now to the wiring. The LEDs are connected to the output of this driver. The input is connected to the microcontroller. I attached a variable power supply as a power source here, so I can play around with the voltage. These screw terminals come quite handy. This driver also has a 5V output that we can use to power the microcontroller later. If we power it from USB like now, we at least need to connect the ground. The Polulu style stepper driver boards have a few more connections, but I linked a schematic for your orientation in the description below. The firmware of the microcontroller runs from the Arduino IDE. We just need the Wi-Fi credentials in this file and upload it. What the microcontroller is doing now is connecting to Wi-Fi and starting a WebSocket server that receives the image. This HTML file connects to this WebSocket and allows you to share the screen or application. It's converting the image to the right format and sending it over WebSockets to our mechanical TV. I'm really happy how it turned out. It's running at 10 FPS currently. The stepper driver is at its limits here. This is Metropolis. And Bad Apple shows also nicely. Maybe let's try to increase the driver voltage. It might break any second, but we can try to run it at a higher frame rate. Ah, okay. the glowing PLA has some burn in when lit for a long time. Maybe it wasn't the best choice. I printed a few screens with different non-glowing materials in several thicknesses. The two layer grey material looks the most promising, so let's try it out. Alright, now we have the problem that the LED is still UV, but we can cheat a little bit and fix it in post. I totally can use it as a main computer screen. If you like this tutorial, please leave a like and share it with a friend, that really motivates. 
I hope to be able to share a video on the Laser CRT with you soon, so please subscribe for that. Great thanks to Bumble Lab for sponsoring this project and big thanks to all my supporters. Your contribution really helps making these videos happen. I see you next time. Bye!